good. After Abe goes to the league. Call this meeting to order. I do apologize. Ran a little late. Had a little malfunction with the front door. At this time, I'll call on the county administrator. Yes, sir. At this time, uh, let's rise for a moment of silence, and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Chair and board members, the purpose of the meeting this evening is to consider the adoption of the real estate tax rate and <coughs> proposed fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, as you're well aware, we uh, made a presentation in early March and uh, provided a proposed budget for your consideration. I know there's been quite a bit of discussion about that proposed budget since then, and I know the schools have indicated um, a desire to have the penny and a half that was recommended for capital be shifted to operations. So I know that's something that the board has considered and wants to talk about this evening. I know there may be some other things that uh, the board wishes to discuss as well. Um, and at this time, Mr. Chair, I'll recognize you and I know that um, there may be some comments from other board members before you move forward with um, any motions this evening. So. <clears throat> Thank you, Craig. Uh, we'll open the floor up for discussion now, and we'll start with Supervisor Tuck. Well, I'll start off with the 89 cent tax rate. Um, when I got on the board, uh, past boards had gone backwards in my mind. Uh, we utilize in the reassessments um, as a means of dealing with inflation. It is directly tied with the inflation rates. As property rates go up, and cost of living goes up. So it, there's no doubt in my mind that the 89 cent tax rate is the right thing to do. Um, I have, I started off with the county administration's proposed budget. I thought about it and I thought, well, maybe we can go ahead and give all of it to the operations. And that was my initial reaction. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion uh, at that point in time about redistricting, I heard not lots of things about crises in um, the, the Christiansburg Strand, uh, and it was a crisis situation. I started then looking back, uh, going back all the way to 2016 and 2017, reviewing the meetings that took place and how we talked about that we should do some remodeling. There were several board members that wanted to look at remodeling versus rebuilding. And we got some estimates, and they were much higher than the estimates that we're looking at today. To be fair, these estimates are, those were for larger expansions, but they included the old Christiansburg Middle School site. Um, and I also then heard the presentation about the mobile units, and while they're nice mobile units being installed potentially at Harding Avenue, the first number I heard was 1.4 million. I believe that's been reduced now. Uh, a five-year lease at $65,000 a year with $500,000 being set aside to set it up and another $50,000 to remove it. I do think that we need to start saving, and I meant what was quoted in the paper. We, the kids in the mobile units has been my goal to get them out. And that's Blacksburg kids, that's Christiansburg kids, um, that's all the kids. And while we're a growing district, sometimes mobile units are inevitable. It happens. Um, but I want to make sure that we start setting aside money for that. I started going through the budget, um, looking, and I was very happy with some of the things that have recently come from the school administration about, yes, we'll make sure that the raises are there. But then it becomes a question of how many teachers would they be able to hire and they do have more students than they used to have. I also looked at the 2008 numbers, and we've heard a lot of different things, and each supervisor in front of them should have a chart 
and one is directly from the school board's information and it lists actually it lists 1661 full-time positions 0.57 um, but we, I went ahead and removed some because I did not think that it was comparing apples to apples to the 2008 numbers you'll notice that there are 1,554 in 2008 before the Great Recession. So we're right there at the same numbers from 2008 and 2018, 2019. Now again, um, they have more students, they need more teachers. Uh, that makes sense. So I have said a couple of different times, I'm willing to compromise. I've talked with, I think, every single member of the board and I'm willing to talk about whether we, how much we put away and how much we give to, to fund teachers to make sure that they do be, uh, have enough teachers to be able to deal with the increases in students. Um, and I know that there's been a lot of discussion about, well, when did they find out about the numbers and things along those lines. I believe each supervisor received an email from Nancy, and this is all going back to 2016, our debt capacity, June 2016, August 22nd, 2016, again uh, in 2000, um, May of 2017, April of 2017, May of 2018. Um, there was multiple talks about what our debt capacity was, and these handouts that everyone got who came to the meetings. And so a lot of different things have gone through my head, but the focus has continued to be do the right thing. And so I'm open to discussion about a compromise uh, on how much we should be setting aside. I do want to clarify one thing, and I mentioned in one of my earlier meetings that an email I'd received and I was able to retrieve that email. I know that the principal wasn't able to retrieve it, but I was able to, and I'd like to re read just a little bit from that March 20th why I was thinking about setting aside money. And it said, Dear members of the Board of Supervisors, thank you for considering a two-cent property tax increase for the purposes of school construction and upgrade. I believe and certainly hope you are aware that many facilities, issues related to CHS, as well as to the other needs of Christiansburg schools. And it goes on to talk about the needs that we have for our future school construction. So I think as someone once said, I think it's the fiscally responsible thing to do to set aside more money. And I'm willing to listen to my fellow supervisors and what exact amount that might be. I would ask and whether we vote on it tonight um, and I like Supervisor Bone's suggestion that maybe we use the $75,000 as a matching fund for the CI for the roof. I think that the $25,000 for the 911 center, that's a requirement. Um, and I'm willing to also discuss other things in regards to that $492,000 that we got at the budget update. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Next. Well, I think I recall talking to uh, Mr. Meadows about his budget when he came out with it. Um, and I told him the part of, the, of his budget that I liked the best was when I heard one and a half cents was going to go to school capital. I thought, yes, this is what we need. We have all these overcrowded schools. Um, the school board has uh, talked about this in my long tenure here, year and a half on the board. Um, but I also heard it back in 2017 that it was um, very important that we uh, get these schools repaired. So I thought that was a, a real good um, point and I'm glad you put it in that budget. And I definitely am in favor of it. With that said, um, uh, I'm also glad that a decision was made by the school board to go ahead with renovations to the three elementary schools. I scratch my head because I think, well, why wasn't this done last year? Or why weren't we talking about this last year instead of one new school that um, from all accounts, uh, I think would have upset a lot of parents to have to switch all their children around. But um, I, I think it's a great plan and I'm definitely in favor of that. Um, 
Also, with the uh, as far as the uh, the numbers that we've been hearing uh, from the school division have been confusing, and some of it is as simple as, and I believe it was back in 2017 when I first heard that number of students in um, Christiansburg High School. And I don't mean to beat a dead horse, Dr. Meyer, but it was one number then, and then earlier this year it was a different number, and then here just a month ago it was even a different number. And I, I don't understand how things like that happen. I don't understand why we don't know exactly or close enough, or if all the numbers were fairly close, that, that, would, that would explain it. But um, it would, there's just so many items that that seemed to shift and change, and it was hard to get a reading on what is really needed and what we should be funding. With that said, uh, I am flexible on what we do with the um, school capital money, um, as far as maybe setting some of it aside for operations. So uh, I'm trying to keep an open mind on that, but I, I still believe that the um, the school capital fund is, is probably one of the most important as we go forward because of the, the condition of the schools. As far as the 89 cent um, tax rate, I'm definitely, um, I'd like to stick with that. I think that's, um, it's gonna move our county forward. It's definitely gonna help our schools. And uh, I think that's the right thing to do. Um, I would like to see uh, money also uh, set aside for the Christiansburg Institute. And I am definitely in favor of a condition uh, of matching money uh, because if we were to give them 75000 I don't know what they could accomplish with it when what they're looking at is going to be so much more money. So uh, I would like to see that come out of the 492000 that we that we came up with. Uh, another piece of that, that money I would like to see um, taken away to kind of fulfill not so much a promise to our sheriff, but uh, last year he said he needed two SROs to take care of the critical needs of the elementary schools. And we gave him one as an experiment, and that experiment has gone very well. So uh, I'm in favor of going ahead and expanding that and giving him the second SRO for elementaries to do, to use in any way that he sees fit. Um, I think that's about it for me. Thank you, sir. Vice Chair DeMoss. Sure. Um, I might not be quite as eloquent as my colleagues were before me, um, and maybe not speak for quite as long. I, first, on the tax rate, the 89 cents, I, of course, am very comfortable with maintaining the tax rate um, where we are for those that have been following <coughs> this board for some time. I've also, in the past, voted in favor of increasing the tax rate. Um, my personal feelings about that are we have some significant needs, not only in our public school system, but also throughout the county. Um, and I understand uh, my colleagues' perspectives on being fiscally conservative, um, but I also personally do not feel like we are adequately meeting the needs of the county or the schools. Um, with the penny and a half that we have currently allocated towards capital, um, I am perfectly fine with allocating that instead to operating the full amount. Um, I also am realistic in understanding that that might not be the majority opinion of this board, so I'm open to compromise. Um, we have heard a lot of information. Um, it feels like it's been going on for months and months, but has it only been a month or two months? Um, but we've been hearing a lot of information about the needs of the school system, uh, the needs to adjust the teacher's salaries to maintain competitiveness in a market where we have a growing no or a decreasing number of people entering the job search to begin with. So I am fully convinced for the need for the teacher's raises, um, and I, I also am fine with moving the money. The, penny and a half fully over to do it. Um, but as I've spoken with everybody throughout the day today, I've gotten a sense um, that I might need to be open to compromise and I've committed to everybody that I am open to compromise um, if that's necessary. Um, I do have some concerns. Um, I don't think it's avoidable. Uh, the trailers at Harding Avenue Elementary School, that is in my district. Um, I think 
I, I share the concerns of many up here where, when it comes to having children in trailers in the schools. I think that it is not a not a wonderful solution. It's something that we absolutely have to do, but it's something that we need to plan to um, avoid in the future if possible or plan to get those kids out of trailers as quickly as possible. Um, I also attended the school board's um, hearing on their budget and heard um, just, and I'd be interested to see how this progresses as we get closer to doing some capital projects in the school strands, but I did hear some concerns uh, relative to Bellevue renovations um, and whether um, we were doing enough for that school or whether that, that, that is sustainable long term for Bellevue. It's just something that I think will be interesting to discuss with the school board as we're moving forward on capital projects. Um, and then I guess um, I guess that's really all of my concerns with the um, penny and a half and, and what's been going on for the last several weeks. Um, with, with regards to the $492,000 that we discussed at our last morning meeting, um, $75,000 going to the Christiansburg Institute, that is something I am comfortable with. I'm also comfortable with the idea of a matching fund for that. Um, we talked about this briefly at our last meeting. I went back and checked the numbers before coming tonight. And I want to make sure that if we do set that up as some form of matching fund, we're not um, limiting them. I think the total amount that, that they said they might need for the roof is $150,000. They've already raised $27,500 for the roof. So I just want to be careful if we set it up for a match. If, it's, if we're asking for a 100% match, we might be asking for them to surpass their goal for the roof. So just a point of conversation. Um, Steve, I think that the idea of bringing in an additional SRO is a great idea. Um, I certainly defer to the experts and I consider you and our sheriff experts in that area. Um, and then of course the 25,000 to the 911 which we have no um, real control over. We need to do that definitely to continue operations there. Um, so I'm interested to see how the dialogue progresses tonight um, and, and what we're able to do if we work together. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor B. Um, I'll be short and sweet. I, of course, I support the 89 cents. Um, we need it. Um, and this is, this is what has occurred with the reassessment, and I'm very supportive of that. I also am very supportive of taking the one and a half cents out of the capital that was recommended for school capital and putting in their operational budget. I, I would like to see the teachers' raises be the three and a half percent. I'd like to see that nurses uh, have the VRS benefit. Um, I, I just think it gives the school board flexibility to really do what they need to do on their side of the aisle. And just like we have flexibility on our side, I think they need flexibility on their side. So I'm very supportive of moving that to operational. Um, and as you all know, um, and the sheriff knows, uh, definitely I'm going to be supporting the idea of another SRO. And there seems to be um, a little bit of discussion um, earlier when I was talking to one of my board members. I know the school board didn't ask for an SRO officer. I think that's in the purview of the law enforcement area. And um, just from my experience, and I think I've said this over and over again as being an elementary teacher in, in Blacksburg at Harding Avenue Elementary um, during some very crisis situations. I just think it's it just incredibly important that you have an SRO, uh, SRO officer in the school, not running between schools when there's a traffic jam and maybe you can't get from school A to B in the school. And I will keep bringing that up and I'll keep fighting for it till we have one in every elementary school. I just feel very strongly about that. Um, I support the $75,000 going uh, in, a, in a fund for the um, Christiansburg Institute's roof. I understand they're going to be asking other um, groups for money too in other localities, so we'll see how that goes. I know we have to do the $25,000 for the 911. Um, I'm open to looking at any other ideas that 
our um, fellow board members might have about any of the rest of that money. I do feel like when I look over the emails that have been sent and when I look over the speakers that have come before us, I think that's why I can say I'm strongly supporting trying to put the one and a half cent into the operational um, part of the budget. Um, you know, I don't know if there's a majority of, of board members that would support that or not, but I'm supportive of it. I also agree um, and support the 89 cent uh, tax, real estate tax rate. Um, I am open to compromise. I do not like trailers either. Um, I like the idea of having SROs in the in the schools. Um, I had hoped to have had a report out from the committee that was examining the different needs for security in our schools prior to jumping to an SRO in every school, even though I'm very supportive of it, if that's what was recommended. Um, I am very supportive of the nurses getting their VRS. I am very supportive of, first and foremost, the teachers getting a 3.5% raise and the hiring of 19 teachers, as recommended. Um, I believe that the additional capital of 492000 uh, could be used for capital improvements instead of taking that out of, instead of not giving the whole 1.5 cents for the schools to use in their operational funds. So let me say that more clearly. I would encourage us to consider using a substantial portion of the 492000 as capital instead of taking it away from the 1.5 cents for operations um, for the schools to make sure that the teachers get the raises and that they can hire the extra teachers among the few other things that they were going to do that was proposed. I believe that every year we find more money after the budget is proposed in the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, I don't remember ever seeing $492,000, but I can recall a, at least a couple hundred thousand every year. And I would propose, I would suggest that we consider using that money for capital moving forward to build up to the extra 1.5 cents worth instead of using the 1.5 cents now and carving out even some to capital and allowing the schools to use it for operations. With regards to Christiansburg Institute, I shared my point of view. I'm very supportive of Christiansburg Institute, but uh, some people know, but not everybody knows, that my day job is Deputy Director at Habitat for Humanity. I work for a nonprofit. And I know that there are a lot of nonprofits in Montgomery County and surrounding it, it, that, that cover the New River Valley, which includes Montgomery County, that would appreciate an opportunity for the $75,000 or whatever value we put out there. Um, so I would ask my fellow supervisors to wait on uh, just uh, deciding on putting money aside for Christiansburg Institute at this point in time. I would ask my fellow supervisors to wait so we could fully uh, discuss the amount of money that we would like to provide <coughs> deserving uh, nonprofits in our area. Uh, yes, of course, I like the idea of matching. You know, that's very common in the nonprofit area, you know, uh, industry. Um, so I'm going to step back 
and also say that I asked the question at the last meeting how much the board has given to nonprofits, for example, the Montgomery Museum or other museums when they were first starting. And Supervisor Biggs said uh, $10,000 back in the 1980s. So I went on the internet, did the CPI calculator, and 10000 back in the 1980s is equivalent to somewhere between uh, 25, dollars to $30,000. So I would be more than happy to support you know, a substantial amount of money going directly to the Christiansburg Institute because I, I, I think very highly of it. But I think that quite a bit should be open to other nonprofits. So I would ask my fellow supervisors to hold off on that. Um, I also have a concern about um, the this, this schools um, and their order, including Bellevue versus Harding. I would like further discussions about that. I don't think that discussion has to happen now. I think about trailers, and I think about my younger son who spent his whole middle school years, three years, in the Christiansburg school. And um, you know, they had those trailers in the back. It was temporary, and I would highly encourage our school system to minimize that. There is nothing that leads me to believe that our school division doesn't have that high on their priority list to minimize the number of trailers. So they're, I believe that they're more expert than I am about trying to minimize the number of trailers that we have. Um, <coughs> And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Shep. Well, it's nice to have money in it. Um, <laughs> you know, I guess I'm a little different than everybody else I'm, um, as far as the tax rate. Um, when Mr. Metis first gave us the, the budget, and um, I saw what it was and some of the responses from other, the other board members. Um, it made me think about the last several years we've talked about tax increases and and we've all said and I, I agreed that um, you know once we did the reassessments that was kind of the the leveler for the whole thing um, in my mind the leveling was going to be two three maybe four cents and not six and that's a little little much for me to me that's a six cent increase in taxes so I'm not sure I can go along with that. Um, I'm still thinking about it. Um, as far as the rest of it, um, a couple things. One, and just recently in the newspaper, and I know Dr. Meyer probably said it here, or Mr. Kranz, that there was flexibility in their budget to make sure the teachers got the raises. And I was glad to see that in the paper in writing. And um, because um, I knew back months ago when we started talking about uh, redoing the uh, elementary schools in Christiansburg Strand and the high school um, and ways that they were trying to creatively get those done, um, it, it was a good thing. I, I looked at it as a good thing. Um, But what scared me a little bit was, after talking about going into debt, was the Blacksburg schools that are of age and not being able to do for them after we got in debt so deep and not having as much money as we could accumulate. Uh, and I'm speaking of that one and a half cent extra on top of the two that we're already saving um, to address those schools. And that really bothered me. So when they came out and said that they were flexible enough to give the raises without that, if, if by chance we didn't um, give that one and a half cent to them, um, I kind of felt better about the whole situation. Um, I am flexible. Um, I, I think we should put it all away, but I, I am willing to compromise as well as some of the other supervisors. Um, I, I want us to all try to be in agreement if we can. <coughs> Um, 
the four hundred ninety-two thousand. I'm I'm kind of in agreement to do the seventy-five thousand to the Christiansburg Institute um, as a matching situation, and then the twenty-five thousand to nine one one, of course. Um, and I hadn't really thought about the extra SRO, but I'm, I would probably be okay with that out of that forty-two, four ninety-two. So I would I think I could agree with that. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Well, I don't have a long speech like my colleagues here. <laughs> I just want to say I appreciate the staff working on this budget. I know several of us have hundreds and hundreds of questions. And I know we, I want everybody to understand each one of us sitting up here, we have a job to do. We try to do the best we can. Compromise is a big word in politics. I mean, you know it is. We have to compromise. I know some of them, some people don't like to compromise on different things. They got, that's their life. I mean, that's what they look forward to is helping everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just want each one of my board members to realize how much I appreciate you and I know what you went through this week because I have. You sat up in the middle of the night wondering and figuring, well, I wish we could do this. I wish we could do that. But we can't do it all. And another thing, you know, all respect to teachers, honestly, I respect you. I really do. But when you talk about teachers' raise, and I talked to Dr. Myers about this, the school has more than teachers. They got bus drivers, custodians, and I've talked to some of them. And they said that they would like to hear more about them too. Everybody in the school system deserves a raise. They honestly do. Everybody at the county side deserves a raise. And I just want everybody to know that we have set up, we have talked on the phone, we have talked in person about this budget. I told some of my colleagues today, I think this was the roughest budget I've had since I've been here. <clears throat> and I think it's because we got more money. I think it is. And we see so many things that we can do. Each one of us has something that we want to do, but we realize we can't do it all. We can't do it all. But at, at the end of it, I want to pre tell the staff how much I appreciate them. The school board, I appreciate you, Dr. Myers. Tommy, I appreciate everything you do, and I do appreciate the couple of meetings that we had. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Chair and board members, the first item of new business this evening is a resolution setting the real estate tax rate and other property taxes for the fiscal year 2020. Uh, you have a resolution before you that uh, has a blank for the real estate tax rate. So at this point, Mr. Chair, if there's a motion and a second for that resolution and as a part of that motion, they need to state what the proposed tax rate would be, the real estate tax. Is there a motion? So um, moved. <clears throat> I would recommend that uh, we establish a real estate tax rate of 89 cents. I'd second yeah. that. Any more discussion? Madam Secretary, you call roll, please. Okay. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Fisikowski? Aye. Mr. Mox? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Ms. Bay? Aye. Mr. Shepard? Abstain. 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 <laughs> Chair King? Aye. I have six ayes, one abstain. All right, Mr. Chair and board members, the next item under new business is a resolution establishing the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget uh, based on the resolution you just adopted establishing a real estate tax rate of 89 cents. That means that the number for the budget uh, is $201,506,061. Now this resolution is simply to adopt the full amount of the budget as I just mentioned. Uh, I know there's been discussion about various pieces, parts of that, and I know one of the big parts of the discussion has been related to whether the penny and a half, one and a half cents that was recommended in 
the proposed budget for capital, whether or not that gets shifted into operations. So uh, it, once there's a motion and a second for the total budget amount, I'm sure that'll be something the board wants to further discuss. And staff can help answer some of the numbers questions if there's any numbers <coughs> that come up during that discussion. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Second. Any more discussion? Madam Secretary, call roll, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zikowski? Aye. Mr. Moss? Aye. Ms. Biggs? Aye. Ms. Bay? Aye. Mr. Shepard? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Chair King? Aye. Sevens? Further discussion about Further discussion about the budget? Supervisor B? Can, can we make, um, well, I don't know about, I guess, discussion, but I guess what I'm interested in it, it, it is finding out if there is support to move the penny and a half from the um, the capital to the operations. Do I need to make a motion to do that? Or I, I guess I can make a motion. We can vote it up or down. Yes. All right, I'll make a motion right. that we move the one and a half pennies from the capital, um, the school capital, into the operational. I second. Madam we Secretary, well, is, is there discussion? Uh, yeah. Were you hoping for discussion? Yeah, like it, okay. you know, I want to put it on the floor so people can <coughs> discuss, or and we can vote it up or down. Um, you, know, Sarah, I don't know if you want me to go first. You, you want to start on there? Well, I, I, that's fine. <laughs> um, you, know, when I've been working my way through this thing, um, I've been thinking a little bit along the lines of what Sarah talked about. I would like. To us to spell out a lot of things tonight because we've all been doing a lot of work um, and so nailing down the resource officers that's sixty two thousand two hundred dollars if I remember my budget numbers right um, but I don't believe I could support setting aside the full 1.2 million dollars but I could agree to set aside a, a portion of that into the operations and um, I'm willing to to discuss about that and then I'm willing to talk about the other additional funds depending on how much we we put in but I really do my goal obviously I'm not running again was to try to leave this county better than I found it and by putting away more money um, it will be helping future boards you guys um, in the years to come where you won't have to face what I did in my first year which was a 12 cent tax increase and I didn't get to vote on whether we were going to build those buildings. I only had the, uh, the only choice I have was voting on that tax increase because the bills were there. Um, so I'm I'm hoping to try to help the next supervisor. So I, I can't support the full amount, but I can support a portion. I I can't support the full amount uh, going to the uh, operations um, at our joint meeting. We talked about three schools that need work in Christiansburg. And then, on top of that, we were told, oh yeah, there's two more in Blacksburg that'll have to um, be repaired after this. Um, we were also told that the, the school division has come up with a plan to make it work on the two cents. I, I, I didn't see that plan. I know what was presented but I didn't see details of how that was gonna get worked out. And until I know that that's gonna work, I think um, that we're gonna need more money put into that capital fund. But I am willing to compromise on that. Um, but we need to be doing something. Uh, I know it's been said many times, boards of the past have never planned for the future. And I don't wanna be a board like that. I wanna plan for the future. Um, the raises are, are in, they're, they're, they're taken care of, um, so we need to think about the schools and getting them uh, finished, so it, there's no way that I can support the full amount. Vice Chair DeMott? Sure. Um, I, I can support the full amount, the full penny and a half being moved to operations. I have no <laughs> trouble voting in favor of that, um, and, and while I say that, 
I completely respect the opinions of my colleagues as well and the desire to plan for capital um, in the Christiansburg Strand and, and also in the Blacksburg Strand. Um, so while I do plan on voting in favor of moving a penny and a half, I'm glad to hear that um, there's also some room for compromise um, from my colleagues. So I guess that's all I have to say about it right now. <laughs> Supervisor Meek? Well, um, I put it out there so you know I support it. But you also know, and I think um, the people that know me know that Two years ago when I proposed the two cent in, um, increase in taxes to go specifically to the Christiansburg Strand schools, I'm very supportive of capital, I know. And I also know that over time, because of the different things that have happened in the school system and with schools, that the operational side of the budget has been affected in a way that employees, and that's all school employees, because you know what? Every employee in the school system is a teacher every single one of them. Bus driver, cafeteria worker, custodian, all, all are teachers. So um, I think that it's time to really, you know, push it forward on the operational part of the budget. And um, then, as you've heard me say over and over again, I'm looking forward to maybe having an opening here where we can really do some strategic planning for capital on both sides, county and schools. Supervisor Bone. I'd like my fellow supervisors to work with me and go through the <coughs> calculation, starting with the 492,000 that was uh, in addition to the budget that was proposed. So, if we take out 62,000 for an SRO. 62,200. Okay, I'm just rounding it. Okay. I so that just, at least we okay. can kind of get to the same place. And the 25,000 for the 911 that's required. That brings us down to 405. If everybody's in agreement to have Christiansburg Institute get 75,000 or something like that, and again, I would ask that we put that money aside and open it up to other nonprofits. Not that the Christiansburg Institute wouldn't get any money. I would support them getting some money, but I think it's more fair for nonprofits to have an opportunity for that money than just one. Um, so from 405, minus 75 would get us down to 330. I would suggest that 330,000 be the beginning of our capital, additional capital. That would be approximately 0.4 cents. And if we think that every year we at least get a couple hundred thousand in extra monies that we can spend above the proposed budget, every year we would probably add another quarter of a cent and we would get to one and a half cents within the next four years. I'm confident of that. I would ask um, that we consider uh, moving forward with Supervisor Biggs' proposal and having the 1.5 cents go to uh, the school's operational fund, especially for the teachers' raises and the additional teachers as proposed because we can consider the extra monies that is available to go to the capital funds, to start building our capital funds. That's all I have. Thank you. Supervisor Shepard. Um, right up front, I'll say I, I, I can't go along with the one and a half cent, give them the whole thing. Um, I spoke to Dr. Meyer on the phone um, after we played phone tag a couple of times. Um, and I told him on the phone that I really appreciate them willing to compromise. And with that being said, I'm willing to compromise. But And I, I, I did want to make one comment uh, about what uh, Supervisor Bone said about the, the 75000 to Christiansburg Institute. I'm not sure, but the reason they need that is they don't have a roof. And that's kind of an emergency to them, unlike probably some of the others. But that's that's all I have. Well, some of the nonprofit we 
$2.3 million mm -hmm. so a year. Mm -hmm. That's what we give out. Well, any more discussion? Madam Secretary, you call the roll, Wait, please. Uh, uh, can I ask what? a question? Can I make a statement? Just further discussion? Yeah. Um, so that $2.3 million, half a million of it is for the ACE program. I mean, there are some seriously big chunks that make up that $2.3 million. So saying that it all goes to nonprofits, when I would think that the, the general public feels that nonprofits wouldn't have included the ACE program among the other big ticket items because there's quite, there's, there's some other big ticket items in that category. So I would beg for my fellow uh, supervisors to reconsider. Am I wrong? Okay. Okay. Uh, to reconsider what that $2.3 million really is. And the types of nonprofits that I'm talking about for that $75,000 are the ones that are only getting 5000 or 10000 a year. That's not very much. And that's why I brought up you know, what did the Montgomery Museum get in 1980? Oh, they got $10,000. Well, that's worth about $30,000 in today's dollars. That's pretty substantial compared to the five or 10 that everybody else is getting, you know? So I think that's where I'm coming from, just so that you have a better understanding of how the numbers make sense to me. And Chair King, may I respond a little bit? Yes, sir. I I, I can't remember the exact dollar figure, but it would have been about seven years ago the museum needed a new roof, mm -hmm. and we chipped in more than the mm -hmm. 5000 I can't remember exactly how much it was. Mm -hmm. All right, at least that's what I believe we did. And, uh, you know, you, when you're on the board, um, only eight years, but sometimes you forget some of those things that happened in the first couple of years. Um, but so we have at times when there's been a nonprofit that has had a major need, like a new roof, we, we have stepped up. What the staff was trying to point out to me is including the ACE program, it's two point, I got another, uh, it's 2.7 to total to nonprofits, including ACE and 2.2 .2 without ACE, right? Thank you. Just one, um, I, um, I think Supervisor Ben brings up an interesting idea and it might be something for a later discussion or an extended work session but built into the budget is thirty six thousand dollars of at the board's discretion money to be able to award um, for various causes I mean it's not totally illogical to think we could host some sort of grant process using that $36,000. Well, that is a good point because the, there was previous discussion about only an RV, but in that budget amount you just approved, as Vice Chair DeMont said, there's $36,000 set aside so you can revisit that issue should you desire to do that for them or any other mm -hmm. agency that may have asked for additional funds. Right. And so um, I to the point, I completely understand it. Um, however, I, I do think the Christiansburg Institute is in an emergency situation, um, and because of that, and because if if the emergency isn't resolved quickly, we could completely lose all of the building and all of the structure forever. Um, I do think that we should strongly consider setting aside that money for the Christiansburg Institute and then also looking at that $36,000 and seeing what kind of options we have for mm -hmm. how to use that money. Not necessarily this evening, not resolving it tonight right. because it's a new thing for us to discuss, but at least having the discussion later on. I, I would agree with that and the Christiansburg Institute, um, you've got to remember the historical value of that in regards to it's such um, an invaluable asset to this county, um, the history of it, and then I think um, once it's restored, it's going to bring people in, you know? So that's another, another thing to sort of think about. May I add something? Mm -hmm. two, thi uh, two main things. Um, 
Of the $2.7 million, $330,000 go to New River Valley Detention Home. $172,000 goes to New River Valley Community Services. These are pages 250 and thereabouts. Um, 810,000 goes to the New River Valley Emergency Communications Regional Authority. 500,000 goes to the, the ACE program. 97,000 goes to VPI Cooperative Extension Services. 72,000 goes to Onward NRV. 60,000 goes to Virginia's first regional industrial facility authority and participating in the New River Valley Commerce Park. So just those alone probably make up more than 80% of that uh, 2.7 or even, uh, I'm sorry, 2.3 million if we take away the ACE. I'm sure what I just mentioned makes up at least 80% of that $2.3 million, million. So if we could set aside the 75,000 plus the 36,000, I don't know, is that what you said, um, Supervisor DeMott's 36? Yeah. Uh, to be considered, um, because I know of several nonprofits in this area that have critical needs and that would bring economic development to this county as well maybe maybe not but until we give the nonprofits a chance to pose their case I don't think we should earmark the money. Again, I think very highly of the Christiansburg Institute, and there is no reason why I wouldn't support money going to them. But I just know a little bit about the nonprofit world here in this county, and I would ask my uh, fellow supervisors to hold off designating any of that money until we decide how to move forward. So. Um, and I forget what the other thing was, so I think that was both. That's all I have. Well, if you remember the last meeting, I asked county administrator if we could have extended work session and talk about this. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be a, you know, I'm all for the institute the $75,000 to, if they can raise the rest of it. But I think we need to have a long discussion before we start giving taxpayers money away. Any more discussion? Madam Secretary, you call roll, please. Okay, Mr. Mots. Can we just, before we call the roll, remind what we're voting on? Because it's been a while since the motion came. <laughs> we're, we're voting on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know what we're voting yeah. on, but I just want to make sure. Well, well the well. motion was to take the one and a half cent that was recommended to put in school capital to switch it over to the operational budget of the schools. Aye. Ms. Pitt? Aye. Ms. Ben? Aye. Mr. Shepherd? No. Mr. Tuck? No. Mr. Fizikowski? No. Chair King? No. Four no's, three ayes. Is there another motion? I would like to make a counter motion to that, or a motion, um, that we take one, one cent of the one and a half cents and give that to the school division for operations, that we also take the 492,000 and we deduct the three items, uh, the 62,000 for the uh, SRO, the 75,000 for Christiansburg Institute, and also the, uh, the monies that we owe to the uh, 911 authority. Um, and I would like to set aside the remainder of that um, to be discussed later um, at a work session to find out what we want to uh, do with that. 
Can we second that? I, I want to make sure I, 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 can I ask to make sure I understand your motion before I second it? So you're asking to set aside the uh, a one, to get, move one cent over to operations. Is that correct? Yes. All right, and then 75,000 for Christiansburg Institute, 25,000 for the 911 center, 622 for um, a school resource officer. Put the other $300,000 aside to discuss that. And then the other half a cent, 400,000 would be set aside for future school capital. Is that, and I'm- Yes, that, that is correct. Okay. And I appreciate you bringing that up because I did leave that out. All right, I would second that motion. And, and I've got some numbers. I'm going to look at everybody sitting at the table just to make sure. Don't roll your eyes, Angie. I can do numbers. Uh, the, the total amount of the fund, additional funding is 492480. I'm, I'm trying to be exact. 62200 is what I've heard requested for the SRO position. 75000 requested for Christiansburg Institute roof. The amount for the 911 authority is 25987 If you subtract those three items from the 492480, that leaves $329,293. Told you I could do numbers. Okay, so that's the exact numbers that are in that motion, I believe. And in that motion, the 329293 would be set aside for a Future Special work session? Yes. Right. For what? Okay. A future work session okay. for discussion. Okay. I got a question about that. So, in that case, then um, Sarah could bring back up her um, discussion then about nonprofits at that time if she wanted to, right? In the work session? Yeah. Yeah. But may I add to mm -hmm. that? Um, I'm going to vote no to that. I don't think you seconded it yet. I, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to vote no, and I would ask my fellow supervisors to vote no, because I would prefer to take that 75000 out and leave it in the 329 You know, just leave that out, and we can decide that when we determine what we want to do with the 329000 So that would end up being, give me a second. Four oh four two ninety three. I would really appreciate it if my fellow supervisors were patient enough to pull out the seventy five thousand that is proposed to be earmarked to Christiansburg Institute so that that can be discussed at a later time um, because they don't actually even know how much they need. The engineer has not done their analysis. If it comes back to be less, if it comes back to be more, I think it's worth waiting until we get the information to determine how much we want to give to them and determine how we want to potentially assist other nonprofits and their economic development opportunities. So I would ask my fellow supervisors to vote no for this proposal so that we can take out that 75,000 and decide on it later. Chair King, I, I, I wouldn't mind amending my motion a little bit on, on that. I don't know if it would satisfy Su Supervisor Bone because um, I, I, what I would suggest is that we do set it aside with the remainder until such a time that matching funds would come forward. But I'm, I'm, from what I'm understanding, you don't, you're not on board with that either. You, you, you would rather. I like the idea keep of the matching thing. funds. There's no question right. about that. But you want more information. I, I would like more information as well as uh, an opportunity for other, for us to consider other nonprofits that may have just as much or more economic opportunity and historical value. I don't know what those are because they have not come before the board and it's worth seeing if there are any out there. So earmarking them, to this 75,000 specifically for Christiansburg Institute, I would prefer us not to do that at this time. If it ends up being that way, I'm all for it. 
I just am very concerned that Christiansburg Institute had the great opportunity to sit before us right before we were going to make a decision and all of a sudden we had $492,000 found and no other nonprofits had the opportunity to do that. So. Chair King, yes. um, a couple of things. The CI has been making presentations to me mm -hmm. every single year mm -hmm. that I've been on the board um, and the roof is in my mind a major issue and I apologize and I would take that as a friendly amendment since I seconded it I was thought that we were voting as it would be a matching fund um, not that we're just simply handing over the 75 but they're going to have to raise $75,000 if they've raised 27 so far they've, they've got some money to, but I was looking at it being matching funds not just a blanket 75 yeah I'd be willing to make that could that I make a recommendation that we split the difference and go 37 and a half thousand right the second matching funds with the Christiansburg Institute and the other 37 and a half thousand that we put aside for other nonprofits I have been approached <coughs> I have been approached by Christiansburg Institute also I think the world of them I just don't think that we're making uh, giving I don't think that we're giving our county the opportunity uh, to do all of the best things that it can do at this moment in time. And I think that um, I, I'm sure other nonprofits have come to you to talk to you about opportunities. If they thought that they could get $75,000 even to match, I'm sure Nonprofits would come, but but we, they've only considered that they'd be getting five or ten thousand a year, which is totally different than seventy-five thousand for a nonprofit. It's life-changing, and it will be life-changing for Christiansburg Institute, but it would be life-changing for other nonprofits too. So I would I would ask that my fellow supervisors. Don't get stuck on the 75,000 with Christiansburg Institute because we don't know how much they're going to need. Chair King. Yes, sir. I, I, I would like to amend my motion to, to say that uh, the 75,000 needs to be a matching at the very least. And, and as a point of order, I would agree to that amendment since I'm the one who seconded it. So I have a question about, so then would the 75000 Steve, be like in a, a separate fund for a CI? It, yeah, I, I, would, okay. I would think it would have to be separate, okay. but yeah, it'll just held be, until. It'll, yeah. it'll be held in special so it just contingencies be, yeah, okay. as okay. designated for CI. <laughs> but, okay. And just but, to clarify, make it very clear, because we're talking about it being a matching fund, the donations that they've already raised towards the roof, I'm looking at my motion in second, would that be considered part of the match? Yes, uh, if, they're ma if they're raising money now and they've been, I know that they're going to Christiansburg, I know they're going to Radford. And Blacksburg. Or, and, and Blacksburg. Blacksburg. Yeah. I, I'm wide open to that matching fund. It's a match for the roof. Okay, I just want to make sure because I don't want to, again, like I said, I don't want to put them in a position where we're asking for them to match it and raise beyond what they need in the first place. Um, and to, to Supervisor Bone's point, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I think that we really should, I mean, we have 36,000 in contingencies anyways, um, and plus we're now talking about having a work session to discuss 329,293 dollars which I think gives us the opportunity to consider um, several nonprofits under that umbrella um, I feel committed to the Christiansburg Institute one because of the historical significance and also two because if it doesn't progress quickly then there will be nothing to fix because it will rot away may and I it, make a, yeah. a suggestion yeah an alternative suggestion that we don't count the money that they've already raised because they didn't know that they would get a matching fund, okay? So all money from this point forward would be matched dollar for dollar 
up to $75,000, but not to exceed the expense of the roof. Does that make sense? So if the engineer comes back and says the roof really only needs $120,000 of him, then they only need to raise 60, they only need 60,000 of our own money to raise the additional 60,000. Um, because I think that the uh, previous money that they've raised went into some of their operations already. No, they have 27,500 in their roof fund. Okay. So they that that money mm -hmm. is set aside. So again, I would ask if it would be okay to not to exceed the expense of the roof and not to count the previous 27,000. Um Am I saying that clearly enough? Yes, I hear what you're saying. I'm so not. if it goes up to seventy-five thousand dollar for dollar, I'm okay with that. But I would ask that we don't we don't count that first twenty-seven thousand. That's what it's in the bank for, isn't it? I, I, mm -hmm. I would not agree to that amendment. I don't know what the, the you I made didn't make one. You, uh, no, I, already, no, right. I already made my amendment. Okay, I'm all done. right. Okay. I guess as a we don't have to spend this money now. No. Right. Um, and there will be further discussion as, you know, to any and all ideas that we all might have. Because if you really look through um, the section other agencies, there's a lot in there that we actually morally need to do that provides services for people. And, and that's my opinion. But I understand what you're saying about getting a little competition going with the with the nonprofits. I get that, you know. Like we give a th five thousand dollars to the Rosa Parks playground. Why do we do that? Because they came a long time ago and they asked and, and we did it, you know. So I know and I don't know really what happened this year as far as people coming and asking, you know, the county administrator for for money, but I think it's worthy of a discussion, Sarah. I really do. So, but I'm in support of uh, what's being proposed now. May I ask a question? <clears throat> so, during the expected uh, work session, extended work session, um, when we review that $2.7 million, that's still not going to change anything in what is proposed right at this moment. That's Everything correct. that is in the budget book is going to be fully funded yes. in addition the 75000 So we're not going to find money until next fiscal year other than this 36000 that is available. And right. if the board and wants the to use it, the 330000 that yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have that flexibility this time. Mr. Chair, just to make sure that everybody's got the motion, what I, what I heard was that of that penny and a half that was proposed to go to capital, that one cent of that penny and a half go to operations for the schools, which is $844,609. Um, the half cent that would remain for capital for schools is $422,305. Then of the 492, 480 in additional revenues that we've discussed, 62,200 would be put in special contingencies for the SRO position. Once that information is brought forward, then that would be appropriated for that. 75,000 would be put in special contingencies based on the motion for Christiansburg Institute. That would be appropriated at such time the board directs us to move forward once a match has been received in total for that. And then $25,987 would be added to the funding for the 911 authority per their uh, budget amendment request. So that would leave an un unallocated amount of 329293 which would also be put in special contingencies for the board to determine use at a later date. That's it. Did I get that right? Yep. <laughs> Any more questions? I got one. Has the uh, superintendent or anybody asked for the SRO option? 
Thank you. No. May I make a comment? Ask me. Yeah. May, um, the, from what I understand, the school division would not request an SRO because they believe that that should be part of our budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think I have that right. I may have phrased it incorrectly. But it's, the, it, it's really coming from our discussion with the sheriff last yeah, year. Yeah, the sheriff. He, he had two positions that he felt were mm -hmm. needed immediately, and mm -hmm. we only gave him one of those positions to see how that would work out. In his report this year uh, with the SRO, it seemed to be go very well. And he still has some schools that he is concerned about as a law enforcement official of this county, and I feel like this fulfills his and takes care of what he feels are are the security needs for those elementary schools, and that's why I'm proposing that. Well, I would just chip in that I see it as law enforcement, the sheriff, the safety of all citizens, including our children versus the school system is the education of the children. But what's really sort of neat to me is, you know, I said everyone's a teacher, so are those SRO officers when they get in the school. So, you know, I'm going to support it. But I understand if someone else can't support it. So, yeah. Just where I'm coming from is the school <laughs> superintendent, I'll be in informed so he can make the where he needs one of them. I mean, superintendent knows where he needs them where he don't. That's where I'm coming. I'm not saying I'm against it. Yeah. I just think they need to be involved in the decision. So hopefully they'd be talking to each other. Should have already. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Any more discussion? Madam Secretary, call roll, please. Ms. Biggs. Aye. Ms. Ben. I would like to make a comment. Um, I am going to, to uh, say yes to this, but I am disappointed about the nonprofit option of holding out to make the decision. So you want that to be part of the record? Yes, right? please. <laughs> yes. Okay. Aye. Mr. Shepherd. Aye. Mr. Tuck? A uh, couple of things. I would ask that the email that I read earlier become part of the record. I would also ask that the handouts that were provided by Nancy become part of our, our record in the minutes, and I would vote aye. Mr. Fisikowski? Aye. Mr. Motz? Aye. Chair Keene? Aye. Seth? I know I'd like to say this before we just first, I know every one of us didn't get what we wanted. But I think we've done the best we could with what we had. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Like I said earlier, I know you set up a night because I have. I don't think Craig lost no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, and last, I want to tell the staff how much I do appreciate it and the school staff how much I appreciate what they've done. I know they spent a lot of long hours on this. With that being said, can I second yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With that being said, meet adjourned. <laughs>